Hey guys, today I'm going to be remaking this clamp rack, but before I do so, let me tell you the reasons why. When I made this clamp rack, I wanted to make a universal design that would hold just about anything. So I've got some F-style clamps on here, some quick grip clamps will work just fine. You can hold uh, these pad style face clamps if you want. You could hold just about anything, bar clamps, pipe clamps, whatever you want. Even stuff that doesn't belong, like a hammer, you can still hang it here. And this is what I do, is I, I put all kinds of crap on here. And for that, it's very handy. When there's an individual layer of one particular row, it's very handy and it works really, really well. So for the concept of it, I'll give it a thumbs up. For my execution of that concept, I'll give it a thumbs down. The problem is when you have multiple layers that have to interact with one another. I'm obviously not a CNC machine and I can't produce that type of accuracy uh, just freehand, which is what I did for all of these cuts. So having every one of these line up with one another is, is very difficult and nearly impossible to do. Uh, so anytime you have something that interacts with multiple layers, like any of my long clamps, you run into some issues. Some being that a uh, few of these areas are really loose and a few of them are really tight. So this one's extremely loose, meaning that this is easy to fall out if the, if the clamp rack is bumped or something like that. Well, some of them are really tight. So what happens if I go to pull one of these tight ones out and I'm not extremely careful, then some of these smaller ones end up falling, which is a deal breaker for me. Some of this stuff has fallen down and it's okay if you see it coming, uh, but anything that catches you off guard is kind of dangerous and more annoying than anything else. So I, instead of going with this universal design, I think I'm gonna go with a much smaller unit that stores the clamps from the wall out. There's two main design criteria for the new clamp rack. Number one, like I said, store the items from the wall out. And the second one, I wanna borrow a concept from my hand tool wall. I've had this for uh, about four months now and something that I really like about it is it's all based upon a sheet of plywood. So if I need to make any changes, uh, such as remount the saws in a different location or whatever, I can either unscrew the brackets or simply just drill a hole into the plywood and insert a dowel. It's super easy to do and allows for a, basically an infinite amount of changes. So for that particular clamp rack, I want to have a solid piece of plywood for the backing and a little bit of extra space to allow for any type of changes that may come down the road. Like with most other shop projects, I'm also not trying to spend any more money. So I wanna use the plywood that I have here in the shop to make this. And something that really helps me if I'm not using SketchUp to lay out the project first is to actually use a large work surface to kind of get an idea for the size and what we can work around. So the sheet of plywood that I'm gonna use for the back is 40 inches wide. And this allows me to use my work table to establish a zone to work in. And this level represents the far width of this piece of plywood. I can lay out my pieces the way that I want them and get an instant visual representation of how this is going to work. And from this particular situation, I think I can get all of my main clamps into about two thirds of it. Uh, and that'll leave me all kinds of room over here for small hangers, for small stuff, or individual items and miscellaneous stuff that may change down the road. So this is going to be approximately 35 inches tall and 40 inches wide and should stick out no more than 10 or 12 inches from the wall, I think. The plywood that I'm using is already 40 inches wide, but I need it to be 35 inches long. So I'll go ahead and make that cut on the table saw first. I went ahead and laid out for my brackets just to make sure that I had enough material. And I'm gonna go 12 inches away from my back piece. It might stick out from the wall a little bit much, but I can always trim them down. So 12 inches away from the wall, or the back piece, I should say, and then I'm gonna go up 10 inches for each one. Now from these two points, I'm gonna come down three inches and in three inches and strike a diagonal, and that's gonna be the shape of the bracket. And because there is a matching diagonal here, I don't necessarily have to go 10 inches, cut it off, 10 inches, cut it off, because I have a lot of waste. This triangle will be rather large. So instead, I can flip the next piece over and nest these two amongst their common uh, diagonal here and that way I can get two pieces in about 15 and a half inches of plywood rather than 20 inches of plywood and if I did the math properly then this means I will get one two three four five six 
sets of brackets out of the off cut from the back piece. And those six sets is exactly what I need for the topmost row of hangers. I taped together all of my bracket pieces because I think it's gonna be easier to cut them all out at the same time. And to do so, I'm using the bandsaw. I would normally use my miter saw for this, but the sliding feature of the miter saw doesn't have that much reach. So the bandsaw is the next best option. And the resulting pieces all have a point on one end that needs to be removed. So I'll go back to the miter saw station to get a cleaner cut and remove all those points. And the last step before attaching these to the back is to establish a two degree bevel on the tops of all of these brackets so that, uh, so that way everything leans a little bit towards the wall rather than uh, accidentally wandering out or wandering forward as I interact with the clamp rack. I clamped a couple blocks to the back panel at the height in which the bottom of the top brackets will be. And what this will allow me to do is rotate the board around and set it up vertically just the way it will be up against the wall onto my assembly table and then I can clamp the back panel to the assembly table. What this does is it gives me a reference surface of the assembly table to uh, use and more easily line up all of the top brackets. They'll just sit in place while I secure them exactly where they need to be. I'm a fan of symmetrical items, items that have symmetry about them. So instead of starting from one side and just stopping two thirds of the way through with all of my larger brackets, I put half of them on one side, half of them on the other side, and then I'll just load them up with the long clamps on the outside and getting shorter as I go towards the middle. Just personal preference, it really doesn't matter. Uh, but I wanted to go ahead and put a couple of these in place, a couple of the clamps in place, so I know where they are going to uh, reside as far as their length goes and that will determine where these smaller F-style clamps will be mounted. Now these brackets are gonna be spaced out a little bit differently than these, so I did wanna get these in place so that I can put some reference marks on the back panel. And also these are gonna be used a lot more frequently, so I want them much lower in the rack and much, easy, much more easily accessible. For the F-style clamp brackets, they do not need to come away from the wall a full 12 inches like the other brackets do because these clamps are not as wide in that direction as the other clamps are. They're a little bit more thinner profile. So I've already got a piece of plywood that is eight inches wide and that's a perfect distance to come away from the wall for these brackets. I just need to cut eight of them down to six inches in length for the height of the brackets. Now on these, I did not make an angled cut on the outside bottom corner, but I did do the same two degree bevel on the top so that these clamps will have a tendency to go in towards the wall rather than come out. So just like every other super easy shop project, I should have done this a lot sooner. This is a big improvement over the last one. It actually takes up less space. Now I wasn't uh, dying for more shop space, but it does take up a lot less space. And it's uh, easier to, to get what I need and not worry about stuff falling. So all of my F-style clamps are right at uh, chest level, which is a little bit easier than grabbing them way up high, which is where they were previously with my quick clamps but all of the longer clamps are easy to remove and really easy to 
throw back in place and not worry about specific placement and not worry about the next one falling off. These pipe clamps in the last layout were really easy at falling back, falling off at you. And uh, this is very convenient and, and foolproof. Uh, I didn't put everything back on here because I did have a lot of crap that I didn't really use. Um, and, and I didn't make specific holders for, for these uh, spring clamps because I just clipped them to a piece of quarter inch Luon and had a T built up on the top previously. So I, it can sit into the bay of my 50 inch pipe clamps that I very rarely use. And typically when I'm using a spring clamp, I'm using a bunch. So I just grab this and go with the last layout and I can do that with this one as well. Also have a lot of extra room right here. Don't know what I'll put there, but uh, I'm sure things will change and it's uh, empty real estate ready to go. The benefit with the vast majority of shop projects is that they make your shop more inviting and more encouraging and just more welcoming to be in the space actually making stuff. So anytime that you can uh, in increase the likelihood of you actually being in your space and enjoying your workspace, definitely take those opportunities to improve upon it. Uh, this is one of many shop projects that I've made. I've got a full playlist of all my shop projects if you want to check that out. If this is your first time here and you want to see more videos just like this, then uh, be sure to subscribe. That way you don't miss the next one I post about once a week. And if you're interested in more kind of behind the scenes stuff, check out my second channel. For the past 93 or 4 weeks, I've been doing a weekly Tuesday update. Kind of what's what happened last week, what's going to happen this week and uh, just some behind the scenes stuff. So check out my second channel if you're interested in that. Uh, you guys take care, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.